Hey guys, Cody Wilson of The Assistant Coach. Um, if you like this video and others like it, please make sure that you like, subscribe, share all that stuff. What we do at The Assistant Coach is that we are here to serve and to help you uh, to be the best uh, coach that you can be, whether that's a position coach, a coordinator, a head coach. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, even if you're just a big fan of the game, we're trying to help you understand more football and provide you resources uh, so that you can do just that. So again, make sure you follow us on our different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, obviously our YouTube account, and uh, our website, theassistantcoach.net, and even on CoachTube where I provide courses. Well, today I wanted to take a playbook uh, spotlight and take a look at a particular play. I'm working on a course that's going to break down um, <clears throat> excuse me, teams from the NFL playoffs this year. And I was looking, and this is actually the first play of the game, from the Vikings and the 49ers. <clears throat> and I wanted to do this play because it's a play that we probably all do. We probably don't think anything too special about it, but there actually are some interesting things here and I wanted to dive into that. The play is called wide. Now essentially what it is, is stretch to the weak side. So they've got tight end to the left, <clears throat> full back offset to the right, and they're gonna run stretch zone uh, to the right. <clears throat> well, it doesn't seem anything crazy about that, so why call it wide and so, instead of stretch? I know plenty of people would call it stretch. Well, I'm calling it wide because I first saw this concept as a concept of Cam Cameron when he was at LSU. I was fortunate enough to get to meet him. It wasn't anything crazy, but I did work with a guy that GA'd for him for a little while. And Cam Cameron, if you don't remember, um, Coached for like 30-something years, spent his first 10 years coaching at the University of Michigan, ended up being a coordinator in the NFL for about 10 years, and then he found his way to my home state, Louisiana, to LSU, and was coordinating the offense there from, I think, maybe 2012 to 2016, something like that. Well, this wide play is one of the things he did. If you remember, LSU has ran the ball like crazy for many years until this year, or excuse me, really to the last two years uh, with uh, Joe Burrow and Joe Brady. <clears throat> so this play, the wide, okay, is essentially a stretch zone play, but what makes it unique is a couple of things. The fullback is going to be leading on the widest defender, on the, on the defender outside the box, which here uh, is very simply the wheel, okay? But... Before we do that, that's just a defining thing. This play, they got a couple other window dressings going on. They take the Z receiver and they motion him across till it gets to about here. And that means that they're going to do some rotations in their uh, secondary here. Okay, so they're bumping and rolling their coverages over, over, bumping the corner in and strong safety up top, rolling the free safety down. So bumping like that means they're probably running some sort of a zone uh, scheme, but they get the Z to line up essentially uh, right here. So they've got actually two guys at the point of attack, which is really interesting, and they could do a lot of interesting things with it. They could run some variations of power, power pass, and get one of them out into the flats. But what they do here is, again, they're running stretch, which the basics of stretch is the same as inside zone for me. I believe <clears throat> in the count system, excuse me, the count system, of running zone and it can apply to tight zone, mid zone, or wide zone or stretch. Uh, and that is to identify the nearest defender to the play side A gap or who is responsible for that play side A gap. So here, if we're running to the right, the nearest defender or the defender who is responsible for the play side A gap would be this nose. So he is the zero. Now, generally speaking, the center is going to block the zero. Well, what good does it do to have a zero unless you're going to keep counting and do one, two, three, and so forth? Well, to either side of this zero, we're going to do just that. We're going to count to the play side, the next man over one, two, three. Back side, same thing. We're going to count one, two, three, and it's in order. One, two, and whoever would become three here because we have... Uh, excuse me, that corner they've done rolled is kind of outside, so this should be the three, the end there. So again, if the center blocks the zero, who do you think blocks ones? You're right, that would be the guard. 
And gain of the guard blocks ones, who blocks the twos? You are also right, ding, ding, ding. That would be the tackles. Block twos, and this is just generally speaking because of pre-snap uh, offenses <clears throat> determining who we are most likely to block. Now, obviously, post-snap, if there's twisting and stuff like that, that'll happen. Now, the other rule that I associate with this is if your defender is on the second level, then look to double team. Okay, and that can change from play to play. If we're running tight zone here, I would ask this right guard to double team with the nose up to the mic because we're running tight. Here, because we're running a wider zone, he knows it's wider. He's going to double with the end up to the mic because everybody is going to be flowing to our right side. So that's the basics of our zone. We're going to end up with this tackle trying to block this end. He's going to help prevent and make sure we don't get a spike inside here. And then he's going to work up for the mic, who should be flowing in pursuit, taking good pursuit angles. Uh, center's got to work hard to get over to this nose. Uh, this guard here can give a hand or he can just go. Okay, Either way, if he does give a hand, it's got to be quick and go. And the tackle's got to get on his horse uh, to get inside of that three tech. So there's the base part of the play. And again, I mentioned already one of the things that makes it unique about wide is that the H can block our force defender there, okay? Any number three in our zone count is either going to be handled by another blocker or we're going to read him, okay? And here we've got a number three play side who becomes our force defender, and you can teach the fullback to do it that way if you like, is to count and block the number three. Now, the thing I like about that is that we did not have the fullback doing that, our combos would be much wider and much harder for our offensive linemen. So this helps them be able to come one backer back over into the box and make more realistic uh, blocks. So we've got that part. Uh, our running back is dropping and open, and he's chasing the outside shoulder of our tackle uh, on, the, uh, on his path, and he's going to be reading the block of the tackle in of the fullback uh, to see kind of where he needs to break it off. But that's not all with this play. Okay, they got the window dressing of the motion coming over. Well, what do they do with that Z and the tight end? We don't have them done. We do know this X is just going to block on the corner. Well, there's two things, and I'll start off with the tight end. The tight end is going to arc release. And many of you guys, if you run spread concepts, you, you know what an arc release is when you run things like power read and things like that. Even sometimes on zone reads, you're getting this tight end to run uh, around here and block somebody else. Well here he's getting around this end and he's going to try to get back inside uh, on the safety. He is going to try to get back on an angle to the play side to block a second level defender. Well why is he going to step to the wrong side first and go around that end that way? Well there's a couple of reasons. Number one it might mess with uh, the reads of the linebackers and stuff. In this case there's a corner over him and even the end it could mess with his reads. He's going to be reading uh, the blocker in front of him, looking into the backfield when he steps the wrong way initially. That could give him pause, and that's exactly what we want to do. We want to do that to guys who are either lined up inside of the tight end, okay, which he is not, okay, or they are responsible, slanting inside, and we think that's going to happen, or if they are a stud. Now, those are the rules that I typically use at the high school level for whether or not I want to arc release on that guy. Here they arc release even though he's outside, and that's fine. Now, making that end pause like that, the thing that's important about that is it makes this next block easy. We haven't done anything with the Z since he went in motion. He's going to run like split zone. Okay, Many of you guys run 20 personnel. You might even call it 11 personnel. Run split zone, and you've got a sniffer fullback type. He might even be an offset running back, and he blocks that backside end. Well, the Z receiver is going to do the same thing right here. He's coming across to block the backside end. Now it's not always necessarily the backside end. That's who he's going for on this play and he actually gets tripped up by the uh, three technique that kind of gets uh, by and um, uh, trips him up a little bit. But that's where he's going and he's going to the end on this play but it's anything uh, of the next color off the backside tackle here is essentially who he's blocking. So that doesn't matter if it's the end or if a linebacker plugs the gap. That's who he's blocking. The thing I like about this split flow here is it also gives linebackers more on the play side here a reason to pause because uh, you do open up good cutback lanes by running the split zone. 
You do also set up the ability to run nakeds and things of that nature, but just again, just enough to make them hesitate, and it's really awesome when paired with the wide or the stretch zone here because if they hesitate and we're already trying to get wide, that's a whole lot different than the hesitation and you're running almost right at them. Now, how that ties together with the arc block back here is makes this block a little bit easier for the Z. And again, you might have already raised your eyebrows when I said that it was a right wide receiver doing that. Now, I know in the NFL those guys are a little bit different than what most of us might have at the high school or even in the college level, but they ask receivers to do this pretty regularly uh, in offenses in the NFL. Now, it does depend on exactly what the offense is, but making this guy pause a little bit instead of this end being able to crash down inside and just have that little bit of extra space does make a big big difference on the play here but anyway again this is wide okay very similar to the uh wide or the stretch uh zone okay we've got a fullback leading we're arc releasing with the tight end and we're running a split zone look with our z receiver and on top of all that we had some motion going on and predicting coverages and getting the safeties to roll i really hope you enjoyed uh, the spotlight look uh, into the playbook. If you did like it, please comment. Tell me what it is you like. Tell me how you think you might be able to incorporate this into your offense, wherever it is that you're at. Doesn't matter if you're Pop Warner all the way up to semi-pro level. Doesn't matter to me. I'd like to know if it's something you already do, maybe how you do it different, how you think you might be able to implement it, and if there's anything else you'd like to see. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I am going to be doing a full breakdown of all the teams from the playoffs. Uh, it might end up being just the main four teams that made it to the NFC Championship, but I am working the divisional round right now, so it might take a little while to get it all out there to you. But, you know, I think, hey, these guys made it that far into the playoffs. They must be some of the best of the best. Let's see what the things are that they were doing to be successful uh, in the league. So uh, stay tuned. That course is going to be coming out soon. And again, like I said, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Check out our CoachTube uh, page. We do have several courses available. Uh, number one right now, I do have a course out that is an offensive coordinator uh, starter pack that's got some documents there. It's only $5, really a great deal. And I've got a couple others coming out. I did just put out a power course that I'm going to start pushing in the next week or two. I've got this NFL course coming out soon. I'm still working, trying to get some things done on the OU offense from last year. But speaking of college offenses, me and Coach Jason Honstad of the Pro Style Spread have gotten together and we did, <clears throat> again, excuse me, a course on the LSU offense, which is out right now. It's doing great. We've sold like almost 300 uh, copies of the course. Uh, it's a very reasonable price right now. Go check it out. We've both got in there and broke down, I think, about 15 or 20 plays, each of things that are unique to what LSU, Joe Brady, and Joe Burrow were doing this year. And they're all very easy concepts that you could all take back to your teams and be successful. But again, I'm Cody Wilson, the assistant coach. I'm here, here to help and to serve you be the best coach you can be. Peace.